Actually. There's a delay in YouTube. Though. Um, so I guess are you guys looking at my slideshow? But first of all, I will just like stop the video. Then can you? Okay, Dr. Shirahan, you can start now. Okay, okay. Um, can you guys see the slide, Sean? Okay, okay. So uh, the title is, we, what we're going to focus in, we focus on, I would like to focus on innovation and research because we know for TVET institutions, uh, it's in our blood. So when it comes to innovation and research, we focus, what are we really talking about? We are talking about ideas or projects because our teachers and our students, they have excellent ideas. They have these amazing skills and they can do a lot of projects. And I know for vocational schools, usually, usually in Malaysia, the students, they have to come up with final year project. So what I'm going to show, what I'm showing you right now is that there are three platforms where the students are able to or teachers, for that matter, are able to showcase and develop their, their ideas. So when we talk about ideas, we also, ideas, it can be product, you know, something that you can touch, something that you can see, as any product. Uh, it can be also a service, and it can be also a program. So there are three platforms. That's, those are research conference, innovation contests and entrepreneurship pro programs. Now, um, in Malaysia, most of our students and even teachers, they take part actively in innovation contests whenever they have ideas. But the thing about it is that other than, it, it's good, it's, it's, it's amazing to be, to be in innovation contests. And I know in Southeast Asia, there are lots of countries that organize international innovation contests, uh, previously physical contests and now virtual contests. But, you can, we can also get our students to join, to present their work at conferences, and we can also encourage our students and teachers to go for entrepreneurship program. Now, the thing about entrepreneurship program, usually it involves grand, business grant pitching. That means you, know, you pitch your ideas, and if people like it, you might get grant or amount of money to expand the project. Now, what we usually do in the schools is to encourage the students to develop, to present their ideas through these three platforms, uh, research conference, innovation contests, and entrepreneurship uh, competitions. Now, when it comes to conference, it doesn't have to be research conference. It can be like for education conference, best practice conference. So before the pandemic, we used to travel uh, to other countries. That was before the pandemic. We went to Australia and Japan, but most importantly, there are lots of events that we took part in in Southeast Asia because Southeast Asia is the best. But now we are you know, moving into a new world. That means in Malaysia, we usually use the terms new normal. Uh, we, like what we are doing now, we are doing things virtually. So I'm going to talk more about platforms that are on the internet, you know, virtual events and, and uh, online uh, platforms. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about grant application too, because I know, I know uh, it's, it's something that is not done virtually, but it can be done remotely. So when we, uh, with our students, we encourage them to present their papers at conferences and publish their papers too. Uh, I know that usually for vocational students, they always have these ideas. And sometimes in Malaysia, there's this perception that vocational students, they are just not meant for certain things, certain things that might be too academic. But I believe that there's no such things. Like vocational students are capable of doing anything that any other students in mainstream schools can do. In fact, I think vocational students and vocational schools and vocational teachers, they have more alternatives and platforms where they can actually really show people what they are capable of. So I always encourage my students, you know, you have all these projects to present them at conferences and show them your findings, your discoveries, your ideas. So in order to break the stereotypes that people have on, on vocational education and vocational uh, students. So I think, I'm not sure in other countries, but in Malaysia, we are still dealing with this kind of uh, perspective that, you know, vocational students, they are just not meant for certain things or they are just not good enough in certain things. So we don't want that kind of uh, perception. So we did this and all of these co conferences are done online and 
using what I like to do, I always put my students on the newspapers. Uh, and then we went for a conference in Indonesia, system conference. Now I would like to place Indonesia. They organized a lot of conferences. Their conferences are very well organized. And most of the time they are free of charge or they have fees, but they are very low. And kudos to them because most of the time, more, many conferences are too, way too expensive. That's why whenever, they, whenever there's an Indonesian conference, we always go for it. Like for this one, it was a fee of charge conference last year. And then we like send uh, almost 30 students and we had these 10 projects presented at the conference. And we, we formed the largest uh, delegation. As you can see here, we were taking a Zoom photo of, of, of the school uh, contingent or delegates. So what we're trying to do is to turn this the idea of students, TVET students, vocational students or technical students presenting at conferences as a, as, a, as a practice, as a new normal, as a practice in across vocational schools uh, in Malaysia. And of course, since we are doing this at Southeast Asian level, so you know, why not the, the whole Southeast Asia? Uh, other than that, I'm going to talk about grant application too. Now, uh, most of the time, I think in Malaysia, people are not really aware that there are a lot, when you have ideas, whenever you have projects, it doesn't matter whether uh, the, they are teachers projects or students projects, you, there are lots of grant opportunities uh, where you can actually get amount of money to, to expand your, uh, to develop your projects uh, at, at schools or anywhere else. So there are certain grant opportunities that we have want uh, from the United States, usually YCLE, uh, if you are familiar with YCLE, that's meant for Southeast Asian. And also, if you look at one of the newspaper clips that I put here, there's a senior uh, grant too. Now this senior, again, uh, this, this senior grant is given by Indonesia. And again, I would like to uh, you know, congratulate the Indonesians because uh, the Indonesian seniors, they are very generous. They are giving away lots of grants. And as we speak, uh, there are two grants available, two grant opportunities available right now from, senior Indone from Indonesian senior and one is for science teacher and the other one is for, is for uh, language teachers. And also I'd like to talk about Hackathon. Now Hackathon is an innovation contest, but unlike most innovation contests where you present your product and then uh, you, know, you get evaluated, uh, Hackathon is something that takes time. Uh, it takes place in a week or in a few days. You have to go for courses, mentoring, and then you pitch your project. Uh, yeah, and students, teachers, if students can do it, definitely teachers can do it too. Uh, so what I'm focusing here, what I really would like to emphasize is that our teachers and, and our students, they can uh, present their projects at these three platforms, like research, I mean, whenever they have an idea, it can be a research, it can be an innovation, it can be entrepreneurship. Now, these three, they are related, but they are not exactly the same. Research is more on you finding an answer to something. And the focus here is usually on literature review and methodology. And for vocational students, yeah, they do that too. When they, when they do project, they are looking for an answer. And they sometimes, obviously, they need to collect data and they need to look at previous studies. So that's literature review and methodology. Now, innovation is when you are trying to solve an identified problem. There's a problem and you try to solve it. And the focus is on impact and potential of your solution. Now, when you look at innovation and research, now innovation is where we are trying to solve a problem. While research, we are not really trying to solve a problem. We are looking for an answer to a question. But when we do innovation, we, are also, we also need to do research because in order to test our solution or our idea or our project, we need to collect data and examine, analyze this data. So that's research. So as you can see, they are related, but they are not exactly the same, okay? But sometimes when you do research, it is just a research. You are just looking answers to questions. You are not really trying to solve a problem. And, and I know that vocational students, they do that too. Now, when you do research or innovation or both, so people will wonder, what's next? And what I would say the next one is to commercialize the solution, whether it's an innovation or a research, it's, a, it's about finding ways how you can market and commercialize your uh, project so that people can use it. And obviously you can make money out of it. Now, I know for most of us here, we are teachers. So we don't, you know, we don't really, uh, we are not really looking for jobs. We, we, we might, you know, we get paid every month. But for our students, when we train them in, you know, at our schools, we have to instill entrepreneurial, we have to help them develop their uh, skills in entrepreneurship. 
So they need to be able, whenever they have an idea, they, at the end of the day, they need to be able to figure out how they're going to commercialize the solution. So that's why entrepreneurship is very related to innovation and research. And unlike innovation and research, entrepreneurship, they don't focus on literature review. They don't focus on the impact of your solution because obviously your solution should already have impact or potential, but they focus on business strategies and market. So these are a few highlights that I'm going to talk about, but I, I don't really have much time. So I'm just saying, I'm going to go really quick. So when it comes to ideas, when we want to develop something, whether it's a research or innovation, the thing that we need to focus on is problem statement. Now, when you want to come up with something, you need to ask yourself and you need to figure out what is the problem that you are trying to solve. Uh, so whenever you think about the plot, because I know in Malaysia, what happens sometimes is that people come up with ideas and they are like wondering what are the problems that they are trying to solve. And the process, appe the process appears to be reverse. You already have a project well developed, but then there's no problem to solve. And then you are trying to figure out or trying to search for the problem uh, that, that that project should be solving. So it's supposed to be the other way around, right? You need to be able, you need to try to define a, a problem first, and then you try to devise, come up with a solution. So whenever you come up with a solution, your solution has to be specific and clear. Uh, you need to think about what is happening, what is the problem here, and who are the people that are involved? Or if they are not humans, maybe they are animals or machines, what are effective and then what are what are affected and what are the effects of these problems so you have this problem it looks like a minor problems but there are long-term effects or consequences out of that problem and we don't want that to happen so that's it about the problem statement so when you look at this student of mine he developed a, a furniture which he claimed uh, to be able to help senior citizens senior citizens are people with limited mobility that means people can Senior citizens or people with limited mobility or people who are disabled, they cannot really move well. So he was hoping that his project can help them, can, can help uh, this, uh, these target groups. Now, uh, he, well, I, uh, I applauded him, I lauded him for his, because he was able to specify his target group. What, what happened here was that he came up with a project and then he was like trying to figure out what problem that he was trying to solve. So I will say that problem statement, although he was able to come up with it, uh, it's not actually a good problem statement I'd, I'd, since you are supposed to be, you know, it, and that's what happens when you come up with a, an, an idea or a project uh, of, of, of something, and then you only then you try to figure out what you're trying to solve. So this is done by students from automotive technology. So he felt that as, as, a, as an auto mechanic or as a student of automotive, mechanology, uh, automotive technology, he, find, he found it very uncomfortable to actually use the creeper pad or the makeshift pad that they use at the workshops. So he came up with something that could help car mechanics or at least could help him and other students at the school. So if you look at the problem statement here, he, he was able to, uh, explain the problem, There's a, the creeper pad that they had at the workshop, it didn't really support the, the people's uh, body structure. Uh, so there's a problem there, what? And there are people, he was able to specify the target group, uh, it's the car mechanics, people who work at car workshops, and then he was also able to explain the effects of the problem. Uh, if, if people cannot really assume comfortable posture or the right posture when they are repairing a car, they will suffer muscle pain and fatigue afterwards. So as you can see in my, what, which, what, which what I highlighted before, which what I highlighted before, uh, you, you, know, you need to explain what, who, and then what happened if you, the problem is not solved. So the next thing that you need to focus on is that, okay, you already have a problem statement. You also need to be able to think about your target group. You have this amazing idea and you already know the problem that you would like to solve, but you really need to figure out the details of the target group. So who are the people that are trying to help, or in this case, what if they are not humans? And then you have to narrow your subject with details, demographic. Let's say I'm in Malaysia, so I come up with an idea. I can't say that I'm trying to solve a problem in China or in Europe. 
when I'm in Malaysia, right? It's not specific enough. It, the demography just doesn't, doesn't fit in. So I can say Malaysia, but still Malaysia is too large. It's one, it's one large nation and I'm, uh, and I'm uh, based in just one state, which is far from the rest of the uh, states in the country. So it's still, it's too huge. So just narrow it down to district that you are in. Uh, we are Keningau Vocational College, we are in Keningau. So whenever we want to come up with an idea, it's better to focus on the district Keningau, or maybe slightly larger, but not, not to the extent of the whole nation. Okay, so you need to be able to narrow your subject and also you need to be able to explain why you pick this kind of, uh, these people, this target group. Now, what happens most of the time is that people have very, a very general target group. That means when you ask them, uh, your ideas, you are trying to solve a problem. Who is your target group? And people will say, uh, everybody, you know, uh, my target group is everybody. So the, I, the answer, everybody is just not tactical enough because obviously, you know, when you talk about everybody, you talk about pretty much everybody, like babies, like babies are usually not, uh, are not relevant to most of the things that we do. Or maybe you have too many target groups. Who are your target groups? Senior citizens and then children and then teenagers and then school students and then people who work at the office. There are too many target groups. So it's not, it's not really practical in a way that uh, you, are not, you are not able to really specify your solution to, to a very uh, detailed uh, target group. So let's say this student of ours from cosmetology. Uh, cosmetology, it's all about beauty. So they came up with this cream. So these girls in my state, they just love, uh, they just love to come up with cream, beauty cream. Okay, so the beauty cream that they come up with is for the skin. As you can see here, the target group, they are, were able to specify the target group. Their target group is women. So it's not men. Men is not uh, men are not there in their target group. Women, but which women? There are lots of women. Women who work in the market. Women who are at home. Women who are work at, at the office. Women who are working at schools. So they say that women who work in professional setting. So uh, within office hours. So they are able to specify that. So that's good. You know, it's, it's very important for you to be able to specify the your target group. So this is like a, a screenshot of a slideshow of a video that they did for virtual innovation contests. Uh, and the next one is that these students of ours from Baking and Pastry, so they came up with a tea. They said this tea can help women, women who suffer uh, post-birth bleeding. So they were able to specify the target group. They were women, uh, which women? Women who have just given birth because the problem that they were trying to solve is the, the post, uh, post birth bleeding, postpartum, uh, yeah, postpartum bleeding. So basically new mothers, women who have just given birth, not just any women, not, not female, not teen, teen women, not, not uh, kids, not girls, not little girls, not senior citizens, but women who have just given birth, new mothers, and women who live in the rural areas. But why women who live in the rural areas? Because according to them, or you know, from what we have discussed, women in rural areas, they live far from the hospitals. So when they are ill or when they need to get medical help, it's very hard for them because it's very far. Most of the time they, they do not go to hospital. They choose not to go to the hospital because it's too far. So that's why they, 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 they specify the target group to women who have just given birth in the rural areas in Keningau. Okay, so when it comes to target group, remember to ask it specific. Now, you already have your problem, you have your target group, the problem that you're trying to solve, the target group, the people that you're trying to help. So now it's time for you to come up with a solution, your ideas. So when you want to come up with a solution, you might have lots of ideas, but you need to be able to look at several factors. First, understanding how well you understand this kind of field of interest, this, this area, uh, this problem. Is it relevant to you? Is it something that you have read a lot? Uh, on internet or academic articles, research articles, or all of all sorts of sources, or maybe it's something that is based on your personal experience. And then you need to think about skills. For vocational students, I'm sure they have lots of skills, you know, a, a baking, a culinary art students can cook very well, know a lot about food, uh, automotive technology students, uh, engineers in the making. So it's skills that you have that you direct, that you actually possess, or maybe you don't have the skills, but you know people that who have that skills and you can actually collaborate with these people or access their skills in any way. So let's say uh, a baking, a, a, 
a culinary arts student wants to do something related to technology and he or she doesn't know much about it, but he can work, he or she can work with somebody who is uh, specialized in electronic technology, who, who knows a lot about this thing. So they can work together. So it's skills that you have or skills that you might not have, but you know people who have it and you can actually work with them. And then resources. So you need to think about resources. So you have all these ideas, but do you have the resources? So I know for vocational students, we have workshops, um, but I think at least in Malaysia, we don't really have laboratory. Laboratory, not laboratory for the, the, the conventional science experiment, but laboratory to, let's say, analyze the content of your product. Um, what happens in Malaysia, and I think this is quite common in Southeast Asia, is that people come up with all these health products or beauty products, and they claim that their products have the, can do certain things, you know, can do miracles. But the thing about it is you can't simply claim those kind of things without scientific support. And since schools do not really have that kind of resources and skills, so you need to be able to know where to send your products to using laboratory for scientific analysis. Okay, On, and then maybe you can use it to prove that your products can do certain things. I think in Malaysia, we usually call it overclaim. You know, you, you come up with a beauty product or health product, and then you, what, what these entrepreneurs do, they start to overclaim or you know, claim their products to, to do certain things, and, and there's no proof in it. And of course, the last one, I would say passion. When you want to do something, you need passion. Otherwise, you will give up very quickly. As I am doing it, I know what I'm giving up. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm sick of it. So you need to be able to keep on going, and that's, that's where passion is very important. So let's say this student of ours, he came up with something with his song welding technology, one of the programs that we have at our school. So he came up with something that can um, help people, cy cyclists and, and bikers to take off the, the motorcycle wheels, so the, the, the bicycle wheels, you know, easily. It's a very simple, I would say it's a very simple uh, mechanical project, but then he, since he's from welding technology, he likes to cycle. So obviously he has understanding of what people experience when they go cycling or when they go, uh, when, they are, uh, when they are bikers. Uh, and he has the skills of welding because he's from that course. So he can weld uh, all those metal plates to, to come up with his project. And he has the supplies from school. Yeah, the school, uh, he has supplies for those metal plates and all those machines that he needs. And is he passionate about it? Yes, because he is a, a rider, a, a motorcycle rider. Okay, so these are the things that you need to look at. Otherwise, you know, you might come up with something. It's a great idea, but you don't have the resources or the skills of it. Or maybe you have the skills, but you don't really have the understanding of the situation that you are trying to venture to. Uh, so this is a teacher. So what she did was that she recycled or they use all these containers that are not being used anymore. As you can see in this picture, there are cans, empty cans, empty ice cream containers. And she used them to teach her students uh, to measure, to measure properly because she's from a bakery program. So as you can see, this is, this is considered as a form of innovation. Is it a product? Not really. Is it a service? Definitely not. But what is it? It's, it's more like a technique. So sometimes a technique can be an innovation too, in a way that it's an innovative technique. It's a new technique that you employ. Now, this is very relevant for us teachers because uh, we, are, we always find ways on how to teach our students. So when you come up with a project, you need to be able to... You need to be able to highlight the novelty of your solution. All right, so that's very important because you know you come up with an idea, and then when you, you when you search on Google, on Amazon, Shopee, you find so many other things that are similar to your idea, to your project, to your product, and uh, they have the same functions. So you need to be able to highlight what is so special about your product, what's so new about it, and most important thing is. How is it different than the ones that we have in the market? Because otherwise, if it's not any different from the market, then people will just buy things from the market. Why will they buy or be interested in using your project? Okay, so that's very important because you know when you come up with something, they are already most of the time they're already in the markets. They're already available somewhere that people can access. So you need to be able to figure out what's so different about it. Sometimes maybe because it saves the environment better. I mean that's not. That because sometimes people will look at certain features. And then, when you explain your project, since I'm an English language teacher, you need to be able to focus on certain words. Like, 
comparative adjectives. Now, my project, it works faster. It's much easier. It, it is actually safer. It can do it in a more efficient manner. So these adjectives help to explain your solution in a way that why is it better or why is it unique, right? So you need to be able to play with words. It's either adjectives, words that describe certain things. It's faster, it's easier, it's safer. That's why it's better. Or verbs that can indicate change. In here, I put increase, adjust, lower, so people can see what, the, what does it really do? It increases the usage uh, of, uh, uh, it decreases the usage of water. So that's good. Okay, so people can see it when people are listening to you or reading about your product, product or ideas, they can tell uh, how, what differences it can do. So this is one of my students, he did this, and then he, if you look at his poster, this is actually an innovation poster, uh, you, can, uh, you can see he uses, he used some of the words like support, uh, reduce, ergonomic, that's an adjective, so you need to be able to uh, look at all these words. And then this is one of my students. What he did here, as you can see on the slide, he's actually comparing his project, the project from his program with what's in the market. And of course, when you do that, you need to also highlight, you can talk about what's weak, the limitation of your project, but you also need to, the most important thing is you need to highlight why your project is better than the market, the conventional one and the innovation that you have done. Okay, is it easier to use? Is it, it takes less time, it's cheaper, it's easier to maintain. So you need to, uh, Keep in mind of these, these adjectives and verbs. And most important thing is that when you come up with an idea, especially for our students, that we need to train them to think, to be aspiring entrepreneurs. So you need to, they need to be able to figure out the commercial potential of their project, you know, who is going to buy it, how are they going to market it. So let's say some of these students here, are, as you can see here, I'm just showing the poster. So in this poster, they put commercialization potential. Okay, so you need to be able to highlight what's, uh, what's so commercial about it. Okay, sometimes in, like in Borneo, since we are in Borneo, we are in Malaysia, we are Malaysia, yes, but we are, we are in Malaysian Borneo. So there are certain fruits that grow only in Borneo. So what my students love to do is that they like to come up with these uh, food products that are based on fruits or vegetables that are endemic or native to Borneo. So in, in, in that way, they are able to highlight not just the novelty of their product, but also the commercial potential of it, because since it is just available in, in Borneo, so it might increase the, it might make it more, uh, it might have less competition in the markets. Uh, yeah, co commercialization potential. So I'm just, I'm going to really fast because I need to give some time to my students to, uh, to present to. So objective, you need to make, you have an objective. You have the problem, you have a solution. How are these going to be linked? It's to your objective. Your objective, basically your solution needs to solve your problem. Because sometimes what happens, you have this really amazing problem and you have this amazing solution, but then they are not exactly related. Okay, so that's why you need an objective. So the objective, or sometimes in research, we call it research questions, it can guide you in, in developing your ideas. So as you can see here, my students from electrical technology, so he put, he put, he put it there, the problem, and then he, he, uh, he talked about the solution, and then he specifically, he allocated a certain part on objective. Okay, what is the objective? Because people were like, okay, you have these ideas, it's very really good, but what does it really do? Why are you doing it? So, you know, so that's where the objective comes in. Now, why you are doing it? So, cake decoration too, I'm sorry. So, evaluation, obviously, whenever you come up with ideas, you need to start, uh, you need to be able to test your ideas, you know, how well do they work? So, there are lots of uh, evaluation techniques, basically, they are instruments, research instruments. So, most of our students, they like to do this kind of technique, which is pretty much straightforward uh, checklist observation. You try the project and then you, you, you tick it on, on a checklist, whether it works well, okay? Or whether if it doesn't work well, so you cross it. So it's a very typical method that they like to do. It's a bit superficial, but at least you do have the data. Uh, and then they like to do survey, obviously, with Likert scale, number one until number five, one strongly disagree, number five strongly agree. Uh, and then, but then a few of my students, they were able to do experiment. They compare between, uh, they did a repeated, they did repeated experiment. They did it on the first uh, trial and then they did, they, do it, they did it on the second time. And then whenever they compare their products, they 
they compared on two different types of, of subjects. In this case, they were experimenting on flour and then they were applying the flour on two different types of cookies, not just one cookies, to see the effects of the flour. Okay, uh, so you need to be able to pitch your idea. So this is very important when people ask you, what's your idea? You need to be able to explain them in 30 seconds or in a minute or in 30 seconds, okay? If you can't explain your idea in 30 seconds, that means there is a problem where you yourself might not be very clear of what you are trying to talk about. And there's a business model canvas. So we usually teach this at our school for vocational colleges in Malaysia. Uh, and for vocational for entrepreneurship, when, we come, when it comes to entrepreneurship, we are still focusing on certain things, but we use different terms. Like we don't use target group, we use uh, target customers. And then we talk about strategies, how to market our product. And then there are certain things that we need to look at when, when it comes to entrepreneurship. Cost and profit, how much does it cost? How, how much profit can you make? And then revenue stream, how are you going to make money? So these are certain things that we need to be aware of when we are moving to the, to the next stage or to entrepreneurship uh, area. And there's a hackathon. Hackathon is an, now I know in Southeast Asia, most, Malay, most Malaysians and Southeast Asia, they take part in a lot of uh, innovation contests, but hackathon is, it's very different because it takes several days to do it. There's a workshop, there's a mentoring, and then in the end of the day, you pitch your project. Now uh, with hackathon, I know currently there is a hackathon organized by Safe, uh, Safe Water that is based in the Philippines and we are planning to take part in that. So as you can see here, we did a virtual hackathon. There's a mentoring session, the trainer, she's from the United States, so we had to do it on Zoom. And then there are also there were courses that we have to attend for almost a week. And then in the end, uh, as you can see in this picture, uh, we have to pitch our, our project. Okay, we need to do a video, a short video to pitch the project. And also there's a grant application. So when we have an idea, we would like to apply for grant. A grant, it can, we can do apply for grant for an ongoing project, a project that we have already started, or a proposal. That means we haven't done the project, but it's okay, it's a proposal. So when you apply for a grant, it can be a research, it can be for a product that you are developing, it can be for activities, or it can be for organizing an event, like when you organize webinar, like the webinar that we are now. Now, senior has a lot of grant opportunities, particularly Indonesian senior. So as you can see here, there's a, there's a grant for YC Lee. Uh, we won about USD 45, I know we, it's not USD 45, it's Ringgit Malay, it's USD 11,000, it's about 45 Ringgit in Malaysia. Now look for YC Lee grant because YC Lee is it's, it's from the United States, it's, it's through the US embassies, and it's specifically meant for Southeast Asia. So we are all, we all are eligible to apply for YC Lee. Of course, senior, uh, like what I said, again, the Indonesian seniors, they are very generous. They always give away grants. Uh, paper publication, of course, when you, whenever you have an idea or a project, you can always consider paper publication. Uh, they might not be that relevant to our students, but they are very relevant to us teachers uh, to publish papers. So we have this, we always do this kind of activities at our school. So the idea is that we always need to come up with uh, whenever our students or our teachers have some ideas, remember there are three main platforms that you can do. You can go for research, you can go for research conference, innovation contest or entrepreneurship program. They are very related. And there are also certain things like hackathons, and then you can consider applying for grants. So that's my topic. I'm going to move to my next students. So I'm just like going to check whether she's available right now. Uh, so this is a presentation, is that all? So I'm going to just like, uh, if I'm, can I, can I mute? Okay, I can mute myself. Thank okay, you okay. very much, okay. Dr. Uh, Dr. Hawan. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, so we are moving to, I'll just, because I have all the slides, so I'll just move to, I'll just move to... The next presenter. Yeah, next presenter. Okay, but okay. Uh, it's going Dr. to be Dr. Ryan Derrick first, and then we will, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. So uh, it's going to be Ryan Derrick. So yeah, I, I would like to present you my students, Ryan Derek from uh, te Electrical Technology. So Ryan, are you here? Hello. Hello. Ryan. Yeah, okay, so uh, you can start speaking now. <clears throat> Hello. Thanks, Dr. Sihajran. Hello, everyone. 
I hope you guys are doing great. My name is Ryan Derrick. Thank you for your thank you for giving me an opportunity to be one of the representatives from Malaysia. So today I'm going to talk about alert plumbing system, a new method for increasing the level of efficiency to maintain the piping system. So let's get started. So basically, Arduino is one open source electronic platform based on easy to use hardware and software. For Arduino boards, it able to read out inputs such as light on a sensor, a finger, or a Twitter message. Used as an output to activate a model, turning on an LED, publishing something online, for example, online or offline apps. You can tell your board what to do by sending a set of intro instruction to the microcontroller on the board. So next, in this research, we will try to help the residents of multi-story buildings, such as townhouse, flat services, apartment, and any buildings that have multiple stories. Besides, it involves a strategic combination of ESP8266 and Blink app. We choose this app because it is easier and faster than the other apps that we tried. ESP8266 is considered consistent with the common usage of smartphone. Next. Our aim is to facilitate the maintenance of plumbing system in residential area. At the same time, we also want to make sure that the residents of multi-story buildings learn to adopt automatically operated system. For that, they don't need to check their plumbing system whether it is in a good condition or vice versa. Next, we also want to prevent unwanted accident at home, especially for the senior citizens, because we don't want anything bad happen to them. For the problem statement, residents in buildings consist of multiple stories, often have to deal with a lot of problem related to internal system like plumbing. We found out that most plumbing system inside this building is prone to water leakage. Moreover, such incident can cause damage to the entire house due to water seeping into walls, floors and ceiling. For example, if there is a leakage on the top of the block and it can also cause damage to the entire lower house. Next, most kitchen in Malaysia are equipped with similar design of plumbing system. It's neat and tidy, but at the same time, it is very hard to detect any leakage. Lastly, procrastination to repair whether leakage is common among many households and in this this is very bad habit. So for the methodology, we use a lot of methods to collect our data. First of all, some of our friends live in a multi-story building and we requested their permission to allow us study this problem at their homes. We also visited other site and talk to the residents who live in this type of building. In addition, we often use social media to help us with our research. Let's move to the next slide. For the Arduino ESP8266, the main component that we need is this one, this Arduino ESP8266. It is a self-contained SOC with integrated TCIP protocol stack. It enables any microcontroller to access your Wi-Fi network. COC stands for System on Chips Microcontroller and TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol or Internet Protocol, which can be used in a private computer network. So basically, it only works when there is connection 
with any network services. For the next slide, it is water detector. Next, we must, we must have water detector. This is an electronic device. It is able to detect any presence of water in target spot, prone to be affected by water leakage. We use this component because it, is, it will notify owner of the house upon detection of any water leakage. For the last component, doorbell, a sign, signaling device typically placed inside the living room. It is the base due to a loud ringing sound as it's a lead mechanism that it can produce. Next. Okay, let me show you how it works. These are the easy step of how it works. First, when there is a water leakage on our plumbing system, alarm will go off and the ESP8266 will directly send a notification to the owner's smartphone. This enable an the owner to be aware of such problem and some necessary action need to be taken in order to fix the leakage. It is very important for our house to be free of any leakage problem. This project notifies you on any leakage that it detects regardless where you are. Next slide. So this is the project demonstration. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Lion. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. That's, that was an amazing presentation. So, uh, yeah, we are going to move to the uh, last presentation, which will be done by uh, other student of mine. So I'm just trying to... Thank you very much, Rian, for your good presentation. So we have uh, the last presentation, okay? We'll do yeah, that. Yeah, okay. the last presenter from... Okay. Nezatul. Nezatul, are you here? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you think you can start now? Aduh, lain. Okay, yeah, Nezatul, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, Nezatul, Hello? You can start now, please. Welcome on board. Okay, hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, please, please start. Okay. 
Excuse me, Nisato, we cannot hear you. It maybe there's some internet problem. Uh, just wait a sec. So, um, uh, hello. So that's my students, but apparently he has difficulty. So I'll just cover it for her. So this is the project that she did. Okay. 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 Please. I'll just cover it for her. So I'm just like trying to move this one. Okay. So, uh, she. She and her team, they came up with a project, it's called STEAM. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, uh, Mathematics, and Arts. So we are usually familiar with STEM, but STEAM is it's the, it's the same approach with the addition of arts. Most of the time, we feel like for vocational students, they have amazing skills, but it's just that they have their projects, they tend to be very mechanical. There's a less or no use of technology. And we are living in the world where People are expecting, you know, uh, automatic technology, automated uh, industry, industrial evolution of 4.0. So, so they need to be able to adapt and, and, and uh, you know, thrive in, in such environment. So that's why we, that's why he and his uh, team members, uh, I'm sorry, she and her team members came up with this project uh, for, for TVET and for rural communities, because in, in, in our place, it's categorized as uh, rural communities. So the goal of the TVET is at the STEM, is actually to teach the students, is to teach the students on entrepreneurship. So it's a, uh, entrepreneurship, it involves arts, right? Uh, when you are, the art of communication, the art of persuasion, uh, the art of, empathy, where you need to empathize of the people that you're trying to help. And also it's the pitching itself, the, the presentation that you do in order to convince people in your products. So that's an art. So that's why we believe art is, is, is an important part of STEAM. And we also, well, obviously the most obvious, when people think of STEM, they will think about drones and robots. Now uh, we are not teaching our students to build drones or robots, but it's about to make, to make them feel familiar with this kind of technology and how they can actually integrate this technology into what they do. Let's say they do some sort of food business. Let's say they do food business. So you can send your food uh, with, you can send your food with, uh, with, with drones to your customers. So that's, that's another way of, of, integrating technology into, into what you do. I mean, obviously when you, like most of our students, they, are, they come from hospitality departments. So they usually come up with food. And uh, what happened is that, what happened is that uh, they usually don't integrate technology into what they eat. Obviously we don't, we don't put technology, uh, we don't put technology into, uh, we don't put technology into what we do, uh, into food, but you can integrate it into your service. Uh, and we also have 3D printing. It's a form of art. So this is very relevant to students of engineering backgrounds, especially construction background. When you want to build something nowadays, there's already, there are technologies where people can build houses uh, and build anything out of 3D printing. So they have to adapt to that. And how are they going to stay relevant and integrate that kind of technology into what they do? So it's not something about that caused them to lose their job, but it's something that will enhance their performance. And we empower women. In, when it comes to STEM, we understand that it is a male dominated field and we would like to have more women uh, in this kind of field. So 
one of the target of the project is is to empower women is to include more women and when you look at this uh, picture these are these were students with special needs so we felt like other than empowering women it's also important to empower one of the most marginalized community in our society and those are students people individuals with disabilities individuals with with special needs. So as you can see here, these students, they communicate in sign language and we don't want them to stay excluded. We want to include them. So that's one of the goals of the project because in, in, uh, in, at our school, we have students with special needs. Okay, students of special need, they cannot really adapt well in mainstream education. So many of them, they go for vocational schools, but then it makes us wonder, how are we going to cater to their needs? or you know since they are special education students because we need to integrate them into into the mainstream uh, society into the main uh, norm, uh, to, along with other students and uh, we can't leave them uh, uh, remain excluded so yeah that's that's pretty much about it so that's all from us uh, that's all from us actually thank you so much uh, thank you so much uh, mr sarwan and as well as senior chat for giving us this opportunity so i'm going to stop sharing the screen right now thank you so much dr sarwan and your student with a very great presentation and very good sharing from your topic uh, it's like so helpful for tibet student for steam student so I really appreciate your team, strong commitment, and very uh, informative knowledge will be applicable to our education, to the, 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 the regional education. Uh, you have very good students, two students, who have shared a lot about uh, Arduino mod, Arduino ESP water detector, and also another student, sorry that she cannot uh, present, but uh, you can uh, help her to present. It's very interesting, and uh, especially I know you have proposed this technology for helping the special need student. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the floor, if you have any question to the speaker, please kindly let us know. Uh, we will try, our speaker will answer. Or if you have any comment, please. Dr. Uh, Sir Havant. Yeah, that's me. Anything else you want to add or? Uh, I, I just uh, note that you have 10 <coughs> projects present at CSTEM conference, right? Yes, yes. So uh, since we are senior organization, uh, senior chat, uh, there are lots of conferences organized or activities organized by senior too, like what I've said before. Uh, I think Indonesian senior, they are the, the most generous one. So that's, I think that, that conference in uh, Indonesian conference, it's either organized or co-organized by, by Simeo, yeah. So maybe in the future, you will be taking part in our uh, conference program. Yeah. If, if it is implicable with our partner in China, there is a skill competition. Definitely. Yeah. Right? Yes. Miss Echo is also here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's here. You could see her. Yeah, yeah. Very really appreciate to your team. What about the ELS chef? Do you have any? Uh, uh, do you have some more explanation? I I know ELS chef from your presentation. What is uh, what, ELF chef? What's that again? I'm sorry. It's uh, how is it spelled? <laughs> ELF chef. E I F. I'm, I'm like looking at the PowerPoint. Sorry, so which part of that? Yes. Uh, self. Um. Is it maybe the, maybe I know something wrong? Or yeah, yeah. I it's, it's okay. Uh, I'll just is it wisely? Are you talking about wisely? I'm not so sure. 
Yeah. Okay. Just... Then, however, anyway, uh, because uh, we want to hear from your student, Mr. Lee Satu. Can she, she speak out uh, the last minute for uh, her own words, uh, her own words? Miss uh, Satu, can you speak? Can you say something? No? I think I'm not sure whether she's... Okay. Okay, yeah. So, uh, from this two presentation, from this two uh, school presentation, uh, it is our good step, good moving that our school network has shared with the other school in the region. Uh, our network has expanded more and more, and today is our pleasure we uh, can organize the first webinar, even there is some technical issue, technical problem incurring during the startup of the uh, uh, webinar. We are so sorry uh, that uh, we cannot control this and uh, we will promise next webinar will be smoothly working. And we want to hear from the other participants. If you have any question, please kindly let the speaker know. But if you don't have, we will proceed to the closing uh, ceremony with our director. Okay, maybe no. Ladies and gentlemen, so let's move to the uh, 